all right my dear students i am here today with the basics topic which is, which includes topics such as double entry day books source documents and similar things this is basically tested in cai examination question question number 1 uh although this question does not belongs to the exam past papers uh, it is made by me specially for students to revise the basic concepts of double entry now let me read the question for you mr ard who is me as you may know has the following transaction for the month of november these are all transaction for the month of november what i need to do i need to complete this table this table is basically given in an examination question you just need to write in the values just fill this table for each of these transactions or all these transaction we need to make a general entry we need to identify which account would need to be debited and which account would need to be credited identify source documents source documents uh, are also known as documentary records now before going through this question i will suggest you to first go through all of the basic concepts such as uh, double entry debit and credit and source documents and books of original entry if you have gone through all of these you may practice this question and uh, we need to identify the source document the book of prime entry also known as book of original entry that uh, is used to record these transactions effect on capital we need to discuss our capital will be increased or decreased and by what amount and last but not the least uh, effect on working capital working capital is basically current assets minus current liabilities now uh, i will be reading all of these transaction one by one and filling in this so i would suggest you to kindly print out this page uh, the ans the link to this pdf file is available in the video description uh, you can also take a picture of this in a separate device uh, so you may see the transactions while solving it now the first transaction is on 1st november all of these transaction belong to november so i may write november 1st uh, november at the top so that i need not write uh, november uh in front of every transaction on in the first transaction i am reading it sold stock also known as inventory sold stock on credit to mr x for 500 costing 350 what we have done we have basically sold goods on credit to mr x for 500 now as you may be aware from your earlier studies of double entry so whenever we uh, sell something on credit there are two accounts one is basically for the customer known as trade receivables or debtors and one is for sales whenever we are selling goods mr x customer account would be debited uh, with the amount that we have used uh, the amount that will be using is the actually the selling price we have sold the goods for 500 so mr x would be debited and the sales account would be credited by 500 why is sales being credited because we the goods are getting out of the business the asset is decreasing therefore will be creating the sales account and mr x is basically a debtor because he has promised us to pay us the money in the future therefore mr x would be debited and whenever we are selling goods on credit the document would be sales invoice sales invoice is basically a document which is issued when we are selling goods on credit and the document is issued by the seller in this case we are mr ard and will be issuing a sales invoice to mr x who is our customer whenever we are selling goods on credit these sales invoices that we have issued to our customers will be uh, entered in a book known as sales journal journal was alternatively known as day book you may also write sales day book d a y b o o k or sales journal uh, examiner prefers journal because it is a relatively newer term then effect on capital capital is basically affected by four transactions whenever we are putting in additional capital in the business the capital would increase whenever we are drawing capital out of the business the drawing decreases our capital whenever we are earning some profit or income or gain our capital again increases and whenever there is a loss in the business or an expense in the business the capital decreases now we have sold the goods to mr x which actually cost us 350 so we have sold the goods worth 350 for 500 uh, in order to earn some profit that is 150 that profit increases our capital by 150 then we have working capital working capital is the day to day capital uh i can uh, explain you by that 
that whenever we started business uh, we start business uh, some amounts are locked into the business such as we bought a building this money is tied up stuck up in a building we bought some machinery or motor van this is the money that we cannot use so again we need some capital in order to run the business smoothly to pay our employees to pay for bills to pay our suppliers so the rolling capital that is in the business is known as working capital so the formula for working capital is current assets minus current liabilities current uh, working capital is also known as net current assets net net current assets so when you, wherever we decrease current liability for, from our current assets this becomes net current assets so working capital again we need to see the effect on current assets as well as current liabilities so if you may see here uh, when we sold goods to Mr. X, Mr. X is basically our debtor. Debtor is a customer which is a current asset for the business. If the debtor increases, this means our current assets are increased by 500 and the goods that we just sold to a customer actually cost us 350. This means the thing that is coming into the business is 500. That is the promise for Mr. X. Mr. X is promise and the goods are going out of the business that means stock is decreasing by 350 so one thing is coming that is 500 debtors and one thing is going out that is 350 so overall there is a plus balance positive balance of 150 then on the 5th of November there is another transaction bought goods on credit from Mr. Y whenever we are uh, the examination question mentions bought goods bought means we have we have uh, buy uh, we bought goods uh, this means we have buy goods from our customer we buy goods from our supplier so buy or bought becomes purchases so purchase is always debited why because our asset increases the stock is an asset increases uh, just remember we never use the account for stock or goods or inventory we always use the account for sale or purchase whenever the goods are going out of the business sales is credited whenever goods are coming into the business the purchase is debited and uh, we bought the goods from mr y mr y is basically our supplier so supplier is a liability whenever a liability increases it is always credited whenever we are buying goods the document would be purchase invoice so the document uh, invoice is the same what happens whenever i am selling goods to someone the document that i am issuing him or her is known as sales invoice uh, i named it sales invoice because i sold the goods to him or her and the other party named the same document as purchase invoice because they are buying goods from us so from the seller perspective it is known as a sales invoice and from the buyer's perspective, the same document would be known as purchase invoice. Whenever we are buying goods, the, doc uh, the book would be purchase journal. Purchase journal can also be written as purchase day book, D-A-Y-B-O-O-K. -O then we have effect on capital. Uh, now answer one of my question. And the question is that uh, when we get some profit, when we buy some goods or when we sell some goods, so buying does not actually result directly in some profit it is the sale of those goods that generate profit for the business so when whenever we are buying goods for the business there is no effect on capital so there is no effect and the working capital see the goods are coming into the business our stock is increasing by 300 stock is a current asset and uh, Mr. Y is basically a liability for the business. A liability is also increasing. So see the, the effect is cancelling out. Stock is increasing. Current asset increases. And Mr. Y liability is also increasing. So current asset minus current liability is equal to working capital. So working capital, there is no effect on working capital because of this transaction. Then on the 11th of November, the transaction is that Mr. X returned 40 goods worth 50. Mr. X is basically returning goods to us. Maybe they are not suitable or maybe they are a wrong size of specifications. So he is returning goods to us. So whenever Mr. X returns goods to us, it will be returned inward. Any other customer returns to us, it would be returned inward. Return inward will always be debited. Why? Because the goods are coming into the business. Return inward was also known as sales return previously, but the newer term is return inward. So when Mr. X returns goods worth 50 to us, whether Mr. X would be paying us that amount, 
If Mr. X returned goods to us, he would not be paying us the amount that he owes us for this and that is $50. So Mr. X account would be credited by 50. Return inward is debiting because goods are coming into the business and Mr. Y is being credited because Mr. Y will not be paying us the $50 he owes us. So whenever customer return goods to us, the document would be credit note. So there are basically two notes. I hope you have uh, discussed, uh, learned this when you were going through the lecture for source documents. So I may repeat it for you. There are two notes basically. One is debit note and one is credit note. So whenever customer return goods to us, he or she issues us debit note and we in return issues him or her a credit note. So the debit note is of no use unless and until a credit note is issued to the customer in response to their debit note so whenever a transaction completes uh, whether the transaction is completed when the customer issues us a debit note or whenever we the seller issues them a credit note so the transaction completes when we issues them when we issue them a credit note so the debit note has a no value and we will be always writing a credit note in the exam we can write a debit note in the exam when when the examiner specifically ask us that uh, uh, state which document will be issued by customer that is mr x in this case so we if, if this examiner specifically asks us so we can write debit note and uh, else we can or we will always be writing a credit note so book of original entry whenever goods are coming back to us we will be recorded in return in word journal they would be recorded in return in word journal and effect on capital this is something difficult uh, see whenever uh, when we sold the goods to mr x originally on 1st november we earned a profit of 150 so we need to calculate the profit margin first the profit that we calculated was 150 and the total amount for which the goods were sold were 500 so we made a profit of 150 on the sale of 500 dollar worth of goods this profit percentage becomes 0 0.3 0 0.3 means 30 percent if we multiply 0 0.3 uh, into 100 times 100 this becomes 30 percent so what happened whenever we sell goods to mr x we earn a profit margin of 30 percent so if mr x would have returned all of the goods to us for 500 the plus 150 would have become minus 150 now the uh, mr x haven't returned all of the goods that he purchased from us he just returned goods worth $50 so on 500 we earned a profit of 30 percent that is 150 and we, now we need to calculate how much profit we have earned on this $50 so if we multiply $50 with the 30 percent profit margin the profit becomes $1515 $15. so the only loss that we have incurred while returning while receiving these goods back from Mr. X was for $15 so we sold the goods for $50 and out of this one five fifteen dollar is a profit margin this means this these goods actually cost us 35 dollar uh, per piece maybe so we sold total goods for 500 uh, out of which 150 was a profit so we sold uh, one of the product is returned back to us by mr x worth 50 and out of this five zero our profit was one five so then we have effect on working capital working capital is also minus 15 why because mr x won't pay us 50 dollar so debtor decreases current asset decreases by 50 dollar but uh, the goods that we have returned faulty good that we, that is returned back to us from mr x uh, has actually a cost of 35 why so the goods that we sold for 5-0 actually contains a profit of 1-5. Now if I deduct 50 from 1-5, uh, the cost is price is 35. Now the goods that are coming into the business are worth $35. So the stock increases by 35 and debtors decreases by 50. Stock is also a current asset and debtor is also a current asset. One of the current asset is increasing by 35 and one of the current asset debtor is decreasing by 50. So overall it is a minus 15 so this was something very difficult now let me explain this to you once again the selling price for one of the item was 50 and the profit that we made on that 50 was 15 dollar so this item basically cost us 35 dollar okay so mr x is a debtor debtor decreased by 50 dollar 
and the inventory actually got up by $35. Mr. X won't pay us $50 any longer and the inventory that is coming into the business is $35. One of the asset is decreasing by $50. One of the asset is increasing by $35. Overall, it is a decrease of $15. Now the next transaction uh, on 17th of November mentions that we paid wages for the week by check. Wages, if we are paying wages to someone, this is an expense for the business. Uh, so the expense is always debited. So wages account would be debited and we are paid the wages through check. So whenever the question does not mention uh, the payment medium, whether it's form of cash or check, we'll be always writing bank. And if the question specifically mentions cash, then we'll be using the term cash. Okay, whenever we pay wages, the entry would be expense, wages, expense, debit, and bank or cash would be created. Source document, the document in which we record, we keep the record of uh, wages or salaries pay, paid are pay slip or wage sheet. Pay slip is basically made for each employee, separate document for each employee, and wage sheet is for all of the employees. Then we have cash book. Whenever we pay money through cash or by check, the book is basically cash book or it can be a petty cash book. If the transaction is of small amount, the question will mention that what is the limit, what is the threshold for a transaction to be entered in a petty cash book. Secondly, petty cash book, in a petty cash book, only cash transactions are there, not the transactions of check. So the bank transaction will always come in a cash book. Then the effect on capital. Uh, as you can see, wages is an expense for the business and expenses reduces our capital. So our capital will goes down by 150. Uh, now, uh, bank, bank is a current asset for the business. If the bank is decreasing, working capital would also decrease by $150. Then on 19th of November, the question mentions send details for the week sorry send details for the transaction for the month to mr x mr x is a debtor what we did we sent mr x uh, a summary of all the transactions that incurred uh, during the month that summary or document is known as statement of account so statement of account is basically a document which says uh, it is basically a reminder so there won't be any double entry for this transaction because this is not a new transaction. This is just a summary of transactions that happened uh, earlier in this month. Okay. So this is basically at the end of the month, uh, maybe Mendel Water Company or the grocery shop or the meat shop or the newspaper agent, news agent send us a summary. This summary is known as statement of account. It is just a reminder said that we owe them this much amount of money and now they are expecting to receive their money at the end of the month. Uh, now on the 23rd of November, there's a transaction return damage stock to Mr. Y worth 30. As you may see, Mr. Y was our creditor. We bought goods from him uh, and now we are returning goods back to Mr. Y. Whenever we are returning goods to supplier, there would be return outward. So return outward account would be created and Mr. Y account would be debited. Return outward is being credited because the goods are going out of the business and asset decreases, it is credited. And Mr. Y was basically a liability. Whenever we buy goods from Mr. Y, a liability increases, it is credited. And whenever liability is decreasing, it would be debited. Then the source document. Uh, Whenever we are returning goods to our supplier, we issue our supplier a debit note. Again, a debit note is of no value unless and until a credit note is being issued by our supplier in return. So the transaction would be completed on our debit note or supplier's credit note. The answer is the supplier's credit note. So debit note is of no value, no matter if our customer gives to us or we give to our supplier so the thing that matters is the credit note credit note is basically the acknowledgement by the supplier that he or she has accepted the goods back and uh, the acknowledgement is known as credit note so there was a credit note in sale return as well and there is a credit note in purchase return as well now what is the difference between these two credit notes this credit note was issued by us to mr x so whenever we are issuing credit note to our customer, this means this is a return inward or sale return transaction. And in this in 23rd, in case of Mr. Y, 
we have received a credit note from Mr. Y. So whenever we are receiving our credit note from a supplier, this is basically return outward or purchase return. Or whenever we are issuing credit note to our customer, this is return inward. So uh, basically in an MCQ question, uh, multiple choice examiner asks such questions that if the credit note is received or issued, can you tell the nature of the transaction, whether it is written inward or outward? Yes. Now you can tell whenever we are issuing credit note to our customer, this is a return inward or sale return because customer return goods back to us. Or whenever we have received credit note from where we have received, we always receive a credit note from our supplier, then there it is a return outward transaction. Then whenever a supplier, whenever we are supplier returning goods to a supplier, the book is return outward journal, also known as return outward day book. Then the effect on capital. So we discussed earlier that uh, the profit increases when we are selling goods. When we sold the goods, the profit increased and when the customer returned goods back to us, that is return inward, the profit decreased. Whenever we buy goods, the buying does not directly result in increase of profit and whenever we are returning goods to a supplier, again, there is no effect on the profit. So just remember my dear students, sales and return inward also affect our cap, always affect our capital, but purchase or return outward on the other hand does not affect our capital. Then there is the working capital. There is no effect on the working capital as well. Why? Uh, see, there are two transactions being happening. One is the goods are going out of the business. If the stock is decreased, current asset goes down and the current liability, Mr. Y is a current liability. So current asset is going all, also going down and current liability is also going down, thus cancelling the effect. So current asset and current liability are both decreasing by the same amount. Again, there is no effect on working capital. Now the next transaction is on 25th. The transaction states that we have paid rent for the month of November by check. Whenever we are paying rent, the rent is an expense for the business. So expense is always debited. Rent would be debited and bank account would be credited because the question specifically mentions bank. If the question does not mention bank, then again, we need to write the bank. We, we will only write cash whenever the question mentions that we have paid through cash. Then the source document. Whenever we are paying rent the uh, or any other thing through check, uh, the document would be check counterfoil. So I hope you have seen the checkbook, maybe yours, maybe uh, your one of your parents' checkbook. Whenever we issue a check and uh, we tear apart one of the part of the check and one part remains with us, the smaller part that remains with us with the checkbook is a check counterfoil. Check counterfoil is basically a, a record of payments made through check. Whenever we are paying someone uh, the things that we write on the check such as the party, name of the party or uh, we are issuing, if we are issuing a cash check, we will be writing cash, we will be writing the amount of the check, the date of the check check all of these things would also be carbon copy or written on the check counterfoil in order to maintain a record that we paid to our supplier so if the supplier in future uh, uh, maybe says that we have not paid him uh, so therefore we have some proof that we can show to him or her that we have paid him uh, through this check and alternatively we, we can also uh, ask the supplier to sign the check counterfoil at the back of this so that we have a proof of the payment that made place. Uh, then there is a book of original entry uh, whenever we are paying or receiving money through bank the book is always cash book or it can be a petty cash book if the transaction is small in nature and the transaction is in cash if the payment is in the form of cash then the effect on capital uh, as you may be aware rent is an expense for the business because we are paying the rent and expense decreases our capital bandwidth and the bank is a current asset if the bank is decreasing working capital is also decreasing so there is a direct relationship between current assets and working capital if the current asset is increasing working capital also increase if the current asset decrease working capital also decrease and in case of current liability there is an inverse relationship when the current liability increases working capital decreases and vice versa then on second last transaction states sold old motor vehicle with a book value thousand for 1250 to mr ali on credit so whenever we are selling a non-current asset on credit, the transaction would be 
Mr. Ali would be debited. Why? Because Mr. Ali is a customer. Uh, maybe he is a friend or customer. The, uh, because but we owe from him. Uh, he owes us the money. Uh, for the motor vehicle we just sold to him and we sold the vehicle for 1250 the amount that we'll be writing here is the selling price not our book value or cost price and motor vehicle account would be created uh, as you may see we did not create the sales account why sales and purchase are only used when we are dealing in stocks again return inward and return outward are also used when we are dealing in stocks whenever we are selling a motor vehicle a motor vehicle would be created and whenever we are buying a motor vehicle or other similar uh, maybe office equipment again office equipment account would be debited not the purchase account so the purchase sales return inward return outward these four accounts will only be used when we whenever we are dealing in stocks then uh, whenever we are selling a non-current asset on credit the document would be only invoice and not the sales invoice because the sales invoice is used whenever we are selling goods or stock again the purchase invoice is also used when we are buying stocks whenever we are buying or selling a non-current asset we'll just need to write invoice uh, in terms of credit in terms of credit whenever we are buying and selling in terms of cash the document would be receipt we'll be using in the last transaction uh, then we have book of original entry whenever there is a non-routine transaction such as this this is non-routine transaction because we do not uh, we cannot sell our motor vehicle or furniture every day so this is the, the book is the journal also known as general journal general comes with g and journal comes with j g and j general journal or the journal is preferred because it does not create the confusion then the effect on capital the vehicle that we just sold was in our box for 1000 uh, was the book value the value that remain in the box after depreciating it so the book value was 1000 and we sold it for 1250 then we earned a profit of 250 so the if the profit increases our capital also goes up by 250 then in the working capital maybe you have guessed this that capital and working capital are both moving uh, with the same value so we may write 1250 plus 250 but this is not right why we have sold the goods to mr ali for 1250 mr ali is basically our debtor if the debtor is increasing by 1250 so the working capital would also increase by 1250 now see it may be wrong if you uh, assume that working capital and owner's capital are both the same then the last transaction mentions uh, that sold goods for cash 125 to Mr. Hussein costing 150. Uh, we sold the goods for cash to Mr. Hussein that cost us 150. Now whenever we are selling the goods the sales account would always be created. So there is no confusion in this. But uh, the question arises that uh, what will be debited whether it is a cash or Hussein the answer is this that we'll be debiting cash why we are debiting cash and not the hussein account the reason is that we have sold goods to hussein for cash so if we have sold the goods to hussein for cash uh, now it does not make any difference to us whether he is hussein whether is ahmed raza or the rolia whoever it is will be writing cash or bank now just remember one rule the rule is that whenever there is, there is a cash and bank given and there is a party name also given when we are selling or buying something, we will always be using cash and bank instead of the name of the party. Why? Because we have sold the goods for cash. If the Hussain has paid us upfront in cash, so we do not need to make an account for Hussain. An account for Hussain will always be opened when when we are selling goods to Mr. Hussain on credit. If we are selling someone on cash, we do not need to make his or her account. Okay, so cash would be debited and sales would be created by 125. Why? Because we have actually sold the good for 125. Whenever we are selling uh, or buying something on cash, the document would be receipt. A receipt is basically a proof of payment uh, made from cash. Uh, then uh, cash or check. Book of original entry. Whenever we are selling something on cash or check, the book will always be cash book. 
then effect on capital the goods that we sold for Hussain for 125 actually cost us 150 so there is basically a loss of 25 so loss decreases the capital by 25 now working capital see one thing is coming into the business that is cash 125 and one thing is going out of the business that is 150 the stock that is going out of the business actually costs us 150 so stock is decreasing by 150 and cash is increasing by 125 so overall we are in negative that is minus 25 so i hope students you understood this question uh, although it was not a ci examination question but this question was made by me it was an attempt to cover all of the basic concepts uh, being tested in CIE examination question number one if you do like this video kindly do share it and also write your precious comments and do subscribe my channel if you haven't done that so thank you